My name is Abby Devanayagam. Well, it's Dilakavati, really, but my short name is Abby. Everybody calls me that. And um, I started dancing when I was about five, but that was bef that was because we lived in Sri Lanka before. Yeah, and then we moved. When we moved to this country, I was ten or eleven, and then immediately after we moved, we we carried on dancing, and we meaning me and my sister, um, and she's three years younger than me. I'm 18 now, um, and she's 15 years old. And we did our engagement together um, back in Sri Lanka in August 2006. Um, and that was under the training and guidance of our guru, Dr. Geetha Bhavya. And it's the same guru as yeah. Bhavya over here. Um, and then a year later, um, and I'm Bhavya, um, I did my Alangeshram in Chennai in 2007 when I was 14 and I did my Salanga Puja uh, in 2005 when I was 11 um, and I've also been taught by Gita Ji and um, I'm 16 years old now. So you're a from China? Uh, yes, but I've never lived there properly. I've always lived here. So why did you want to do this? Do an Alangeshram. Well, it's always been my granddad's dream to see his grandchildren or someone in the family, you know, doing and really going all the way with Bharatanatyam because he, he goes to lots of Arangatrams and he's, you know, chief guest and everything. And he's always wanted someone in his family to do it. And I think as you grow older, you start to really enjoy the dancing as well and you get a connection with your guru and that's something that really wanted me to you know, make her proud and make the family proud and give me a sense of accomplishment as well. And it feels like such a long time ago. It's like, is it six years ago now? Is it, no, it's five years ago. It's five years yeah. ago and I feel like I was so young that I was so caught up in the moment that I didn't really know why I was doing it, but I knew I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Is that the same thing? Yeah, and I think, um, I somehow wish now actually, thinking back, I feel like I've improved so much now. So maybe I should have my from a bit later. But um, I, I mean, we wanted to do, I wanted to do it, you know, before I got into my serious education. Um, so that was one of the reasons why I did it when I was 14, because I moved school the year after that. So I really wanted to get it done before I kind of went into my new school, which is a boarding school. So mainly for logistics reasons. So how did you prepare for it? Um, well, I had, um, well, Salanga Puja helped initially with um, getting rid of like stage fright and things like that. So when it came to the Alangetram, it was more improving the skills and the type of the, um, your stamina and things like that, because the stage fright had gone by then. <laughs> so it really helped that I did the Salanga Puja and all the performances in between. Um, and it was just a lot of training, really. Um, and when we went to Chennai, we did it with the musicians there. So we had a lot of practice with the line musicians. Um, and I think it was just a lot of practice, hours and hours and hours. <laughs> and what about your costume? Um, well, I had three costumes for my Arangetram and uh, two for my Salang Puja. Um, they're made in Chennai and, um, one, and each of them are made in a different style. So one was in the trousers type of format, uh, style, and another was a skirt, another was in a sari style. Um, and they all had contrasting colours, but they were still traditional colours that we used, like purples and quite bright colours, really, to show up on the stage. We always start with a red, or I think it's like a spiritual colour kind of thing. Like in weddings, in Indian weddings, they always wear like, a red or an orange or something and whenever you start the show we always try to start with you know a red or a, a maroon or that sort of colour but yeah. So did you have costumes made in Sri Lanka? No in India. They, they don't stitch very, I don't think they stitch costumes in Sri Lanka actually. Um, they all get everything's done in Chennai. That's the main that's, place where Bhaktanathya That's where everything's bought, yeah. isn't it? the jewellery, costumes and everything. So did you build that first? Um, actually, no. Um, my teacher went to India and she took the measurements with her and she picked the costumes and got them stitched here yeah, for us. 
So did you rehearse it with the musicians in Sri Lanka? Yeah, because the Tharangetram was done in Sri Lanka. Um, because most of my family live there and my mum's family live in India so they came to Sri Lanka for it and Arangetrams are such a big deal in Sri Lanka and India aren't they? Mm. It's, like a, it's like having a wedding yeah. so like hundreds of people are there and there's like a, um, a kolam, you know like a rangoli what they call and like candles and everything and people handing out flyers and it's just like, it's so overwhelming because yeah. it's all this but just me and my sister dancing on stage and we're not even professional. <laughs> and it's, it's like a family reunion. It is like a family thing. I mean, like, I mean, so many people came from abroad. My uncle just came just for one day to see, to Chennai, just to see me dance and then he went back and Steel Magnolias from yeah. Hull. So a lot of family and friends came from abroad too. It's a very big deal. Huge deal. And how did you feel just before the Arangetram? I didn't feel tense at all. <laughs> I was just scared that um, my gr um, I was just scared that the people around me didn't get my costumes on right, and that it would fall off. That was my only worry. I wasn't scared about the actual dance. <laughs> I just hoped I could do Gitaji proud. Yeah. That was actually the scary bit. I don't think nervous nerves was an issue anymore because before the Arangetram, you sort of trained to do little performances. That's what we, we did, didn't we? Went before RNH and when we were like 12 years old, we used to just perform for the dance, for, for, the, for Kala Sangam, which is a dance organization. And I, I don't think nerves was the issue. It's just because I did it with someone else. It's just to make sure that if something goes wrong, it looks completely out of place because it's synchronization, which I was more worried about anyway because it was my sister and she was a lot shorter than me at that time. So it's just making sure that everything was perfect. So yeah, it, nervous, nerves was I know, I don't, I don't think nerves was a problem because we'd practiced yeah. so much yeah. before. Get so many hours of every yeah. single day. You, you have to make your way to the rehearsal hall. Like we used to practice, when we got to Sri Lanka, we started in the morning and we had a rehearsal with the musicians until, you know, afternoon, had lunch, and then had another rehearsal in the evening. And then after that, just me and my sister and our guru, we get together and do another rehearsal. And that can go on till like 10 in the evening. How many days did you do that for? Well, I was in Chennai for around two weeks before. Yeah. I was, for six weeks, I was in Chennai the whole time. And um, I was in Chennai around two to three weeks before then. So at my aunt's school, there's a big hall, and that's where we practiced. And that was good, though, because there was no air conditioning or anything. I was doing it in the heat. Do you remember? I remember, because <laughs> we went to watch her rehearsal just for moral support. Yeah. And we were sweating so it, hard. And no we weren't even yeah. dancing. We were just watching her dance. <laughs> Um, so I think that would really help because then my stamina was really high because the hall that we did it in was actually air conditioned. So if you can do it without the air conditioning, it kind of gives you a bit of self-confidence. I'll be okay with the actual yeah. day. And how do you feel it's deepened your understanding of Indian culture? Definitely. It's because all, what our guru tends to do is she makes sure that we understand the meaning of the song before we convey the expression. Like I remember our first... Abhinaya class and Abhinaya is just mime and expression so telling a story to the audience and the first lesson she gave us two lines of a song and she told us this is what it means she said put your hands behind your back sit down and I want you to show this line with just your face and it's just training like that just that really shook it, it's sort of like taking the Indian culture, the, those two lines, whether it's about a goddess or love or anger or whatever, it's conveying that to the audience. But in order to do that, you have to understand it properly. And that's where your point about culture and heritage comes in. You learn so many different stories like of Krishna, Rama, and lots of different aspects of God. Yeah, and I think also it's because, I mean, I went to India and learned from a different teacher as well, and they don't put in that much emphasis on actually understanding what you learn. It's more just learning it than do it, learn, do it, whereas, like, Gitaji actually explains it to you, and especially because I've lived in England my whole life, I didn't really have much of an understanding before I probably came here, and it's and even beyond that, like, it's kind of a way of life now, the way I walk, people always say I walk like a dancer, 
whatever that means. Um, and whenever people come home, um, they, they ask, they just sing a song and they say, like a traditional song, they just say, do the expressions. And I can because now I understand the language better, yeah. what facial expressions to use. And you're just familiar with all the, uh, the songs, the language, the culture, the yeah. way you dress, you know, being decent and modest <laughs> and things like that. Yeah. So what are you doing with your dancing now? You start. Yeah. Well, you have more to say, so you go first. <laughs> okay. Well, right now, I'm actually teaching part-time. Every Saturday, we, we have dance classes in this building. And it runs from 9.30 in the morning to about 11, 11.45ish. And then after that, they have classes at another city nearby. So we travel there to teach as well. So partly, it's teaching. And the other side is performing as well. So since the Iron Gate trip, every year, we try and do like a, quite a large scale performance, either you know in India or here or wherever. Like recently, we did a fundraiser me and my sister for patients with renal failure, and it's just like keeping the dancing going because it's part of who we are now. And whenever people ask, so what what else do you do? We say, oh, it's Bharatanatyam, and you know how often do you do it? You know, it's a part of our life now because of all the things that we've learned from our guru, it would be a shame to throw it all away. So just try and keep going, really. Perform anywhere, and wherever she tells us to perform, we perform. Um, yeah, I go to um, boarding school now, so for the past three years, it's been quite hard for me to come to actual classes. Um, but I've, I've tried to keep in touch with it. And um, when I go to India, I always try to do some dances, or at least see some dance and keep you know, in touch. Um, I do a lot of performances at school, um, so that's the main way I keep in touch with that. And also recently we uh, did an event. It was kind of like a cultural integration program in the town that I go to school at. And um, it was basically at a, it was a school for disabled children, for really young disabled children. And it was just raising awareness about Indian culture. We did a dance performance there, which I kind of tried to choreograph, but it was a mixture of Bollywood and Bhattanatyam. So it's basically, and also there's, there's quite a lot of people who are interested in dancing and in Indian dancing, it's just kind of, but they don't have the time to, so just kind of raising awareness about that in my school, because a lot of people do appreciate it, they want to know, you know, how can we get involved, but not enough time. So I just dance, and then they come and ask me, and we're just trying to sort out something right now. So in a sense, do you feel like cultural ambassador? Uh, in my school, I feel like the only person who, like, I'm the only person who's ever done Indian dancing. But, yeah, I guess. Did you teach in school? Um, well, I'm trying to, but it's quite hard to set up a dance class and things because we lead very, very busy lives <laughs> at school. So it's really enriched your life. Yeah. How yes. do you see the future with dance? I really want to travel and dance a lot more in different countries. Well, of course, India and Sri Lanka we've performed. Actually, we went to South Africa this year and performed there. So I re really want to travel and perform in different places and watch performances in other places. And obviously not, probably not do it full time, but I always want it to be a part of, you know, who I am. And I always want to do it with my sister as well, because since the Iron Gatrum, it really drew us so much closer because we had to work together and we didn't really get on that well beforehand. And now we're really close. And I think I have to sort of give that to the Iron Gatrum, really. That's, that's what brought us close together. And now I can't see my, I just don't like dancing solo anymore. I just like to dance with my sister all the time. Um, for me as well, I want to carry it on, and in university I am determined to really kind of start it up again. I see university as the place where I'm going to start it up again, because these three, four years have been, I think, have been, it's my fault that I haven't really been going to dance class and things. It's due to logistics problems, because I live so far away and things. But I really want to kind of go to more dance classes when I'm in university, when I'll have more time, and I'm determined that I will start it up again. <laughs> Anything else you want to add? We have a great dance teacher, and, yeah. and we've made good friends. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we've, been, we've become really close. We've yeah. performed together, like me, Mina, and my sister, yeah. and 
uh, Bavia. So we, we had the opportunity to work as three people rather yeah. than for me just two and for her just one person. So it's nice to dance in a group. Um, we've done some group dancing with, yeah, uh, with other, other girls who have well. com completed their engagement as well. Um, yeah. yeah, we've done like folk dance. We've not only we've done, done yeah, but we've tried to stick to to, Bhagnatyam. to Bhagnatyam. But we don't have Mohiniyattam. We've, we've done Mohiniyattam, which yeah. is a, a Kerala, Kerala dance, dance Kerala. style. That looked really good. We all had the same white sari dresses, yeah. and it was like twelve of us on stage, and that looked really good. Um, and we did a folk dance as mm. well. Yeah, we've done folk. So we've had a go at Bollywood as well. Yeah, we've had a go at <laughs> Bollywood, but. We like to stick we to We like, yeah, classical as well. We prefer classical, to stick yeah. to Bharatanatyam because I think anybody can do Bollywood, Bollywood yeah. but Bharatanatyam training, it takes such a long time. Yeah. And it's... If you can do Bharatanatyam, then you can do Bollywood. You can do anything, you really. really. It yeah. makes every, even like hip-hop and yeah. street dance and everything seem so much easier when you have a good Bharatanatyam grounding. Well, well, and stage opinion. fright goes, so that helps with drama and things. That helps with drama. We do, you do a lot of drama as well, at school. don't you? At school. And I did a lot of drama at school, so that interconnects really well as well. And it helps with public speaking as well, actually, yeah. I realised. Yeah, it does. So it helps great. with everything. Yeah.